Hey, my name's Bob Grinier, and I'm a volunteer with the Martin Fleischmann Memorial Project. Okay, so about 172 hours ago, uh, we set off the Cosmic Ray Finder, looking at the uh, webcam, which has a piece, the end uh, piece of this uh, stainless steel that looks like it's gone to some sort of ferrite type uh, material. Uh, strapped to the front of uh, this webcam with some sticky foil over it. This is aluminium foil tape uh, and we're using this because uh, it was identified by uh, Vlad Zhigolov uh, in the tests with uh, Alexander Parkamov's woodpecker reactor that this uh, does stop uh, uh, sort of uh, strange radiation at least from the uh, uh, woodpecker device from uh, producing tracks on a uh, uh, CD. Uh, also, um, uh, this was used, uh, foil was used as a reflector in the work of John Hutchison. Okay, so it's, it's there, it's been there for 172 hours uh, with the foil on it, and it would appear um, with 103 or so uh, samples per minute of the 2,304 by 1,536 pixel array, uh, RGB, that there have been nine detections. Okay, so uh, that is a, an estimated sort of detections per day of approximately 1.22 recurring, something like that. Anyway, so uh, you can imagine that if there is a, a multiple spots on a particular frame, that are over the threshold level, which has been set to one of these RGB values being more than 150 out of 255, from zero to, 256, uh, zero to 255, 256 discrete levels, then it will do uh, a capture. And uh, we can see it's only done nine captures uh, in 172 hours, where in every minute there is 102 or over 100 samples uh, taken. In that case, it's vanishingly unlikely that you would get two spots uh, in a close proximity uh, within a single frame. So we, we have got nine detections, and of those, there were uh, six interesting. Now, these are all being synced to a Google Drive, and in this video, you will have the link. So I will continue to let this run, assuming there's not a power cut. Uh, maybe there will be more um, detections, but. Uh, out of the first nine, there were nine that uh, uh, six that seemed a little bit interesting. And what I've got here, and uh, it's going to, uh, you'll have to download them and have a look at them, but uh, uh, you can see um, this is at uh, 1600 times magnification, and all of these are at 1600 mag magnification. And I'll try and lower the uh, exposure on this so it gets it correct. Now what I've done is, uh, in each case, I've got a uh, background um, and background copy, and I've adjusted the background copy to make uh, it pop out a little bit more, but the originals are recorded and uh, automatically recorded into the Google Drive as they are captured, uh, and you'll have those to look at. Uh, so uh, this is the uh, as is, and this is the uh, uh, that's that's the, the raw file and that is the slightly enhanced. So in this case, there was almost no need to do any enhancement uh, to be able to see what you're looking at. Um, but this is what we call a spot. So this is probably a beta ray that, or something uh, akin to a beta uh, that has gone straight through uh, the detector creating a spot. It could be a muon that's gone straight through the detector and you know that maybe that's more likely. Um, but given the orientation of the sensor uh, uh, not facing into the sky uh, and also, um, uh, uh, yeah, well essentially that, uh, it, it may be uh, a muon. Uh, but uh, a beta with, with this foil in the way is going to have more trouble getting through. But anyway, th that's a spot and uh, it, that's what it looks like. And there are actually a couple of these. This one's a spot with a little tail, so maybe it came in a slightly different angle. This is uh, looks a, more like a spot uh, and it's coming in even a more sort of glancing angle uh, going through the CCD. But then, uh, and again, these are all at 1600, so you can see the relative scale. Uh, of these various uh, uh, tracks, and I'll, I'll just also turn off the uh, top layer. So that's as it was, and that's in the raw data, that is in the uh, process data. 
that's in the raw data. Uh, sorry, that, that's in the raw data, that's in the process. So the spots tend to be quite bright because they're going like straight through, okay? Now, um, this is <laughs> really quite interesting for me um, because if it was a beta going, you know, through the sensor directly, um, uh, it uh, would curve in one direction, okay? If it was a muon, it would be literally a straight line. Uh, in this case, uh, it's kind of some huge event on the, the corner of the CCD. And this is, if it was strange radiation, this would be consistent with uh, what happens with strange radiation. It's, it's met a, uh, um, an impedance uh, discontinuity and something's happened. And this has come off and it's, it's bending in one way and it's then going straight and then it's bending in the other way. And the other thing is it looks like it's going in and out. So maybe uh, you can imagine this is coming into the detector and then that, and, uh, more and then out of the detector more and then going back in. So is this a, an M going up and down, but it's a very small one? Um, I don't know, uh, but this really is very interesting. So you can see it's, it's the same scale, uh, 1600, uh, so that's 1600%. Uh, uh, but you can compare that to what a spot looks like. Uh, so where most of the energy is dumped in one spot, uh, uh, this is uh, quite a long track. And in fact, I think it's almost the, the longest, sort of nearly contiguous track uh, uh, that we've had when we've been doing strange radiation detections. Now, the next track is really fascinating for me. Uh, again, we're at this 1600% uh, 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 well, scale, but this looks like it's going it's like spiraling through. Uh, now, with, did it come in this way and spiral that way? I will come in this way and spiral down and, and lose energy? I don't know. Or did it come in and just hit the, the discontinuity at the top of the, the uh, CCD and, and then dishevel? And I don't know. Um, uh, but that's a, an interesting track. Then this track, again, at the same 1,600%, uh, if I uh, actually, if I go back to the previous one, you'll see that this one is relatively dim. This is this is the process layer. This is that as uh, uh, raw data. Um, so uh, there needed to be quite a bit more on that. In this case, uh, that's the raw data and that's the the process data, and not too far off. Um, and uh, this case, uh, the that's the raw data, that's the process data. But the interesting thing is, this is two spots. Now remember what I was saying, you have 100 plus samples per minute, uh, and uh, over the course of 172 hours, it's detected things seven times. These are, as you can see, if I turn off, this is the raw data, they're almost equally uh, uh, strong. Now, the interesting thing is, that th there is a potential for maybe a, a beta to come down through somewhere be reflected and come out the other way but you would imagine it would be a spot here and another spot here this has got like a a, a trail here and then a sort of curve over there now um, this kind of suggests to me this is not a beta it's not a muon uh, it is not um, a reflected beta so what potentially could it be well it could be one of these kind of like uh, strange radiation where you have two on a circle and it's, it's come in and it's got caught as it goes around and, and shoulders actually captured uh, these two two um, sort of pirouetting uh, 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 evos in his uh, pinhole uh, electron camera or whatever it is uh, spinning round so maybe this is it and it's coming through the sensor like this so it's kind of two spots but these two spots um, had to have happened within uh, half a second. They're very clearly demarked. There's no sort of bleeding between them uh, and so on. So this for me is a very interesting track. And then this one looks a bit like a spot, but it isn't. It's kind of like a really big event here and it's kind of branched off in two areas. It's like gone poof and gone poof. Now this on its own would be interesting. Again, this is at this 1600% uh, uh, magnification. But um, and I'll show you, this is, this is the raw data and this is the uh, processed data. But leaving it on the processed data, uh, I'm just going to pull out actually. And as you pull out, you can see there's another spot down here. Now remember what I'm saying. 
you, it's very unlikely that you would have two events on a particular uh, uh, capture. And if we pull out, there's actually a whole series of events and it's actually quite big. <laughs> so we got this one here, which is this kind of like, boom, explosion at the end. There's one here, there's one here, there's one here, there's one here, and it's kind of got this parabolic curve, which we see in strange radiation tracks. So for me, this uh, really is, um, it's a very fascinating thing. Now, did, did it come from here and go out and curve? No, it looks more like these kind of parabolic curves that have been uh, observed. And remember that this is coming from the thermocouple that was placed inside, uh, I think it was, oh, I think this one here, one of these holes here, uh, you can see in Lyons. Uh, notes uh, where precisely that went. Now there is a slight risk that uh, if there is strange radiation coming from the the reactor here, it's coming through all the way over or over to where this is. Um, uh, but it is it's one of these fall off laws, and uh, uh, this is kind of like at least 20 centimeters away uh, from uh, the first core that's closest to it, and. Uh, it has two layers of plastic in between and then all the plastic and whatever governs the electronics there is before the backside of the sensor there. So I think most likely it's either coming from this one and somehow getting through the foil or it's actually coming from the tip, uh, which uh, was the, the most highly degraded part, which we've strapped to the front end of the perspex. It's still getting through the perspex and still getting through the IR filter. Um, so it's still having to do quite some work to get to this point. But um, this is really, really fascinating to, to me. So. Uh, you can go and have a look at these, they're all in the shared drive which will be in the description of this video. Uh, and this one with the spiral going on, and uh, this one with the double bend and it's apparently going in and out of uh, the uh, um, uh, sensor. They're interesting. These ones are the usual dull sort of spots. Now this bite might be a strange radiation track going straight through <laughs> and you're just but you just can't determine what it is because you, you've got no sort of spatial resolution in an X and Y plane rather than just going through the Z. Um, so as if you guys in America um, and uh, yeah, so th there we have it. Strange radiation. Now, what I'm going to do for the next uh, numbers of hundreds of hours um, is I'm going to add this um, uh, neodymium magnet uh, uh, set of blocks. And actually, we had a couple of uh, neodymiums um, when we were doing the monitoring the strange radiation from the echo fuel. And uh, so I just thought I'd add that at this point and just to show you that they're not all facing the same direction. The fields are a little bit all over the place. Uh, you can see with this MagnaView uh, paper here uh, that that is the case. And so what I'm going to do with that is I'm actually just going to drop it on the kind of top of here and, uh, you know, see if that has any influence uh, as to whether the... Uh, 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 strange radiation is uh, pushed away or pulled to uh, the uh, sensor. So uh, I don't know, this is just having a look and seeing if it'll do something interesting. So keep an eye on uh, the directory. As I say, it's linked in the uh, description of this video. Uh, thank you for your time.